a, a variant of concern. That's the Omicron BA2. The WHO feel we should keep an eye on it. That's right, Chad. I thought we were discussing this. It's the latest topic in COVID. This a new variant that people have heard of. It's called BA2. And the World Health Organization just issued a huge statement about it. So it is a variant of concern. So they're watching it closely. And when they designate them of concern when they're, when they're interested in them. And they're saying um, it's like Omicron, basically. So it's like a sibling of Omicron. They've renamed Omicron BA1, actually, because of the similarities between the two. So it's a new one, the new kid on the block, if you like. And they're watching it very closely. Overall, though, Pat's so far, it doesn't seem to be that troublesome in that it's similar to Omicron in terms of how it causes disease. But still, it's, it's becoming the, the prediction is that it will be the dom- dominant one. And in fact, Tony Hulin said uh, by the end of the month, it'll be dominant in Ireland, this, this BA2 Omicron variant. Now, the difference in the two variants um, in behaviour and in uh, the consequences of contracting it. Yeah, they consider calling it pi, actually, because it is quite different to Omicron, you know, and they thought, will we use the next Greek letter? Because, as you know, they're using Greek letters, and they discussed that. And the WHO said, well, no, we'll, we'll keep we'll keep it BA2, keep it simpler, I guess. But but it could have been called pi, because it's quite different. I mean, there's fif- what I call 50 amino acid differences in it. So the spike is slightly different. Uh, there's other proteins that differ as well. So there was a slight concern that maybe it would, it would have changed a lot to make it more, more dangerous, I guess. But then what they've found so far, thankfully, is in Denmark and the UK and South Africa, it's causing the same level of illness as Omicron. That was the first concern that it would cause more severe disease. Doesn't seem to be the case so far. But again, they're watching closely. Certainly in unvaccinated people, uh, that would be a concern. Maybe it would cause more severe disease, for example. Secondly, it's more transmissible than Omicron. In fact, it's 40% more transmissible than Omicron itself, which was already highly transmissible. Hence, it's taking over the world is, is, the, is the view they're having now because it's spreading so fast. You know. Okay, so uh, the the question then of how effective vaccination is in uh, deterring this particular variant. Uh, I mean, is it the same as the effect on uh, BA one? Because we know people who are boosted can still get uh, Omicron BA one. Uh, what about BA two? Yeah, that that's cl- looked at closely. There was a good study in Denmark actually that twenty four people who'd been vaccinated against the original virus, of course, took blood from them and and tested the antibody on BA two, and it was slightly slightly less powerful so that concerned them a little bit you know in other words the antibodies were less able to neutralize BA2 compared to BA1 and that was one concern of course if the if the antibodies had weakened but the view is that weakening isn't isn't strong enough to cause huge concern and the second was they tested some of these monoclonal antibodies which are used as therapies that you can give to people these antibodies now some of those stopped working against BA2 and again that concerned them but then one of them was fine the sotrivimab which which we've discussed before that that seemed to work quite well against BA2 so it's kind of a mixed picture. Antibodies seem to be less against BA2. Uh, the other thing, of course, is they're saying the T-cell part of the immune response, that seems to be holding up against it. So therefore, the T-cells, as ever, may, be, may save us in a way. And that's important, Pat, because there, there will be more variants, you see, coming down the track. And the fact that we can still handle BA2, again, gives us optimism that whatever variant crops up, we should have some level of immunity against it. Now, what about therapies like the antivirals? Uh, have they been tested against uh, BA2? Yeah, the, the, wasn't what the, the targets for those drugs hasn't changed. So those antivirals should work really effectively against, which is a, a, good, a good weapon to have again. Every time a new variant crops up, and as I say, there will be more, it'll go through a series of tests exactly as we're discussing. You know, do antibodies work? Do T cells work? Do antivirals work? And, and hopefully all those will hold up against any variant that emerges is the idea. The one, the one worry we had, Pat, was last weekend, the Japanese, uh, a Japanese lab in Tokyo did an experiment on hamsters of all things an animal model and, and it turned out BA2 was much more severe than BA1 it made the hamsters much sicker and we all said oh god th- this could be a worry then you know because if it's making hamsters sicker it may make humans sicker but of course they're hamsters and they hadn't been vaccinated either by the way so so that, that little alarm bell in, in all of us for about a day went off you know but lo and behold it doesn't seem to be holding up in humans that it's more severe mm. 